Hello viewers, Namaskar. This is to announce the launch of Jan Hitme series as part of our Connect TV. Jan Hitme means in public interest, purely in your interest and our interest. Now we have a piece of breaking news as part of the Jan Hitme series. For a long time, we have been reporting that uh, there, has, there have been desperate attempts to block free flow of tidal water to Panjai wetland. And uh, this has been happening despite the orders from the state government, the state environment department to Sirco as well as the Raigat district collector to clear all the uh, blocked inlets. In fact, there have been five inlets to the Panjai wetland which have been blocked manually and the huge barricades have been put up to uh, you know, uh, stop the flow of uh, free flow of water. So the result has been that uh, most of the wetland has gone dry and uh, our colleague uh, Nandakumar Pawar had approached uh, the NGT, National Green Tribunal, which has in fact uh, ruled that the as long as the state government order is in force, the, uh, the Sirko and uh, Raigad collector must immediately clear all the uh, blocks. This happened, uh, this order has come out on April 15th and today we are into April 29th, uh, 15 days have gone but yet nothing has happened on the front. So a miracle of miracles has happened, uh, day for yesterday and yesterday was the super moon days, the super moon seems to have done the super trick. The tidal water, the gushing waters have uh, flown so much, flowed so much that they have flowed over the uh, man-made barricades. And uh, got into, entered the part of the uh, Panja wetland. Unfortunately, uh, it has entered only part of the wetland because the entire uh, wetland up to 18 hectares could not be covered by this water because of the uh, barricades in between and the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the continuous landfill has rendered the the wetland dry and uneven in fact the water cannot flow freely because there have been ups and downs in the in, in the wetland area So, but the happy news is that, uh, friends, the, uh, the, with the little water, we could find a swarm of birds. A lot of birds have suddenly landed on the wetland and uh, our uh, local birder, nature, nature lover, Parag Gharat, had uh, ventured out with his camera and uh, shot uh, uh, these uh, visuals that we'll show you shortly. And uh, there we found that he found tagged birds, not one or two, but quite a few of them. So we found out from BNHS that uh, the BNHS itself which has tagged these birds, not now, but in September 2018. Last year, of course, there has been uh, not been much of a bird watching hat that has happened, uh, mainly because of two reasons. Number one, the wetland itself has been rendered dry, uh, chasing away all the birds literally to other wetlands. Number two, whoever was going there, uh, the security guards were stopping them. In fact, uh, one of our uh, nature lover friends, uh, Aishwarya Rai, had gone there the other day with a camera and the security man told her that he will uh, break, his, break, break her camera if she tries to move, move a step forward. So this has kind of been the uh, high-handedness and dadagiri that the security guards of uh, Navi, Navi Mumbai SCZ have been uh, indulging in, uh, but uh, nobody was uh, able to stop them. Uh, the result, of course, uh, is there for all of us to see the 
the wetland has gone dry. But with the spotting of these birds, there is a encouragement, there is a bit of a, a, a joy and celebration among the nature lovers because even with this kind of little water, if you can you know, see the birds coming back and the tagged birds in particular, which have, which have been tagged uh, three years ago, are, are seen back there, who shows that uh, you know there is still life in, left in this Punjab wetland. Now it's our appeal to the government, uh, government of Maharashtra to be very strict with uh, both Sirko as well as the right collector to make sure that their orders are implemented. Even the NGD orders have been ignored, which is a very, very, very sad state of affairs. So I think uh, the uh, so-called concerned authorities who have been remaining unconcerned so far uh, need to be you know, given a wake-up call and they must be told to do, to do their uh, duty. After all, they have been earning salaries. They have been getting paid salaries from the taxpayers' money. The tax that is being paid by you people like you and me. Whatever uh, small thing, even if you buy smaller small, small thing like a, a toilet soap or a toothpaste or a toothbrush, we are paying GST. All of us are taxpayers. And it is that tax that goes into the salaries. Government salaries account for more than 40% of the uh, tax revenue. So, why, what are they waiting for? Another court order. Why should we, the environment lovers or the uh, law abiding citizens, be, always be forced to run out of the courts, to run to the courts, as if courts have no other business? There are estimates that uh, lakhs and lakhs of cases are pending with even Bombay High Court. So, uh, this is a very uh, unfortunate situation. Why should we uh, waste courts' time in handling these kind of matters? Why can't the officials concerned be concerned about it? and do their duty diligently as long as they are drawing their salaries. Hello viewers, Namaskar. This is to announce the launch of Jan Hitme series as part of our Connect TV. Jan Hitme means in public interest, purely in your interest and our interest. Now we have a piece of breaking news as part of the Janahitme series. For a long time we have been reporting that uh, there, have, there have been desperate attempts to block free flow of tidal water to Panje wetland. And uh, this has been happening despite the orders from the state government, the state environment department to Sirko as well as the Raigad district collector to clear all the uh, blocked inlets. In fact, there have been five inlets to the Panji wetland which have been blocked manually and the huge barricades have been put up to, you know, uh, stop the flow of, uh, free flow of water. So, the result has been that uh, most of the wetland has gone dry and uh, our colleague uh, Nandakumar Pawar had approached uh, the NGT, National Green Tribunal, which has in fact uh, ruled that the as long as the state government order is in force, the, uh, the Sirko and uh, Raigad collector must immediately clear all the uh, blocks. This happened, uh, this order has come out on April 15th and today we are into April 29th. Uh, 15 days have gone but yeah, yet nothing has happened on the front. So a miracle of miracles has happened. Uh, day for yesterday and yesterday were the super moon days. The super moon seems to have done the super trick. The tidal water, the gushing waters, have uh, flown the, so much, flowed so much that they have flowed over the uh, man-made barricades. And uh, got and entered the part of the uh, Panjai wetland. Unfortunately, uh, it has entered only part of the wetland because the entire uh, wetland of 18 hectares could not be covered by this water because of the uh, barricades in between and the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the continuous landfill has rendered the 
the wetland dry and uneven in fact the water cannot flow freely because there have been ups and downs in the in, in the wetland area So, but the happy news is that, uh, friends, the, uh, the, with the little water, we could find a swarm of birds. A lot of birds have suddenly landed on the wetland. And uh, our uh, local birder, nature, nature lover, Parag Gharat, had uh, ventured out with his camera and uh, shot uh, uh, these uh, visuals that we'll show you shortly. And uh, there we found that he found tagged birds. Not one or two, but quite a few of them. So we found out from BNHS that uh, the BNHS itself which has tagged these birds, not now, but in September 2018. Last year, of course, there has been uh, not been much of a bird watching hat that has happened, uh, mainly because of two reasons. Number one, the wetland itself has been rendered dry, uh, chasing away all the birds literally to other wetlands. Number two, whoever was going there, uh, the security guards were stopping them. In fact, uh, one of our uh, nature lover uh, friends, uh, Aishwarya Rai, had gone there the other day with a camera and the security man told her kids he will uh, break his break, break her camera if she tries to move, move a step forward. So this is kind of been the uh, high handedness and dadagiri that the security guards of uh, Navi, Navi Mumbai SCZ have been uh, indulging in, uh, but uh, nobody was uh, able to stop them. Uh, the result of course uh, is there for all of us to see the, the wetland has gone dry. But with the spotting of these birds, there is a encouragement, there is a bit of a, a joy and celebration among the nature lovers because even with this kind of little water, if we can you know, see the birds coming back and the tagged birds in particular, which have, which have been tagged uh, three years ago, are uh, seen back there, who shows that uh, you know there is still life in, left in this Panja wetland. Now it's our appeal to the government, uh, government of Maharashtra to be very strict with uh, both Sirko as well as the right collector to make sure that the orders are implemented. Even the NGD orders have been ignored, which is a very, very, very sad state of affairs. So I think uh, the uh, so-called concerned authorities who have been remaining unconcerned so far uh, need to be you know, given a wake-up call and they must be told to do, to do their uh, duty. After all, they have been earning salaries. They have been getting paid salaries from the taxpayers' money. The tax that is being paid by you people like you and me. Whatever uh, small thing, even if we buy smallest of the small thing like a, a toilet soap or a toothpaste or a toothbrush, we are paying GST. All of us are taxpayers. And it is that tax that goes into the salaries. Government salaries account for more than 40% of the uh, tax revenue. So why, what are they waiting for? Another court order. Why should we, the environment lovers or the uh, law abiding citizens, be, always be forced to run after the courts, to run to the courts, as if courts have no other business? There are estimates that uh, lakhs and lakhs of cases are pending with even Bombay High Court. So, uh, this is a very uh, unfortunate situation. Why should we uh, waste courts' time in handling these kind of matters? Why can't the officials concerned be concerned about it? and do their duty diligently as long as they are drawing their salaries.
Hello viewers, uh, here is a bit of uh, breaking news. For a long time, we have been reporting that uh, there, have, there have been desperate attempts to block free flow of tidal water to Panje wetland. And uh, this has been happening despite the orders from the state government, the state environment department to Sirko as well as the Raigad district collector to clear all the uh, blocked inlets. In fact, there have been five inlets to the Panje wetland which have been blocked manually and the huge barricades have been put up to you know, uh, stop the flow of uh, free flow of water. So the result has been that uh, most of the wetland has gone dry. And uh, our colleague uh, Nandakumar Pawar had approached uh, the NGT, National Green Tribunal, which has in fact uh, ruled that the as long as the state government order is in force, the, uh, the Sirko and uh, Raigad collector must immediately clear all the uh, blocks. This happened, uh, this order has come out on April 15th and today we are into April 29th. Uh, 15 days have gone but yeah, yeah, yet nothing has happened on the front. So a miracle of miracles has happened. Uh, day for yesterday and yesterday were the super moon days. The super moon seems to have done the super trick. The tidal water, the gushing waters have uh, flown so much, flowed so much that they have flowed over the uh, man-made barricades and uh, got into, entered the part of the uh, Panja wetland. Unfortunately, uh, it has entered only part of the wetland because the entire uh, the wetland up to 18 hectares could not be covered by this water because of the uh, barricades in between and the uh, uh, the the uh, continuous landfill has rendered the, the wetland dry and uneven in fact the water cannot flow freely because there have been ups and downs in the in, in the wetland area so but uh, the happy news is that uh, friends the uh, the with the little water we could find a swarm of birds a lot of birds have suddenly landed on the wetland and uh, our uh, local birder, nature, nature lover Parag Gharat had uh, ventured out with his camera and uh, shot uh, uh, these uh, visuals that we will show you shortly and uh, there we found that he found tagged birds, not one or two but quite a few of them. So we found out from BNHS that uh, it is BNHS itself which has tagged these birds, not now but in September 2018. Last year, of course, there has been uh, uh, not been much of a bird watching hat that has happened, uh, mainly because of two reasons. Number one, the wetland itself has been rendered dry, uh, chasing away all the birds literally to other wetlands. Number two, whoever was going there, uh, the security guards were stopping them. In fact, uh, one of our uh, nature lover friends, uh, Aishwarya Rai, had gone there the other day with a camera and the security man told her kids he will uh, break his break, break her camera if she tries to move, move a step forward. So this is kind of been the uh, high handedness and dadagiri that the security guards of uh, Navi, Navi Mumbai SCZ have been uh, indulging in uh, but uh, nobody was uh, able to stop them. Uh, the result of course uh, is there for all of us to see the wetland has gone dry. But with the spotting of these birds there is a encouragement, there is a bit of uh, uh, joy and celebration among the nature lovers because even with this kind of little water if you can you know, see the birds coming back and the tagged birds in particular which have, which have been tagged uh, three years ago are uh, seen back there who shows that uh, you know there is still life in, left in this Panja wetland. Now it's our appeal to the government uh, government of Maharashtra to be very strict with uh, both Sirko as well as the right collector to make sure that the orders are implemented. Even the NGD orders have been ignored which is a very 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 sad state of affairs. So I think uh, the uh, so called concerned authorities who have been remaining unconcerned so far uh, need to be you know, given a wake up call and they must be told to do, to do their uh, duty. After all they have been earning salaries, they have been getting paid salaries from the taxpayers money the tax that is being paid by you people like you and me. Whatever uh, small thing, even if we buy smallest of the small thing like a, a toilet soap or a toothpaste or a toothbrush, we are paying GST. All of us are taxpayers. And it is that tax that goes into the salaries. Government salaries account for more than 40% of the uh, tax revenue. So why, what are they waiting for? Maybe another court order? Why should we, the environment lovers or the uh, law abiding citizens we always be forced to run out of the courts, to run to the courts as if courts have no other business. There are estimates that uh, lakhs and lakhs of cases are pending with even Bombay High Court. So uh, this is a very uh, unfortunate situation. Why should we uh, waste courts time 
in handling these kind of matters? Why can't the officials concerned be concerned about it and do their duty diligently as long as they are drawing their salaries? Now over to the uh, shots that uh, Parag has taken. Welcome to uh, an interesting chat on uh, uh, the Connect series, as part of the Connect series. Today we are meeting uh, uh, the promoters of uh, the promoter of Sanket Mehta, the promoter of Nutrifresh, which is uh, into organic farming, which is into some kind of a novel kind of organic farming, as uh, they say. So let's understand what they are doing and what has been the uh, success so far. And I believe they have been doing wonders during the pandemic uh, in particular. Sanket Ji, welcome to the show. So, uh, what's the background? You before coming into uh, this NutriFresh, what were you doing? You were you were a banker, I believe. Hmm. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so before entering into NutriFresh, after my education got over, so B Tech and MBA, uh, I joined bank. I was working with Central Bank of India as a credit manager in Pune division. Okay. So generally, what happened is uh, in the Pune division, I used to get proposals for sugarcane industry or agriculture background or a food processing industry, which gave me an insight of agriculture. And since uh, I was born and brought up in Mumbai, so I know that the agriculture produce that we are getting in Mumbai is not that of the utmost quality what the farmers used to produce, and there was always a demand and supply gap between the two of them. Uh, I met Mr. Ganesh Nikam, who was also from the finance background in the bank only, and uh, we both decided to do so, to do something good in agriculture because okay. of this gap which was observed in the agriculture. Okay. Uh, so we initially, so Ganesh is actually a predominantly a farmer only. He is a resident of Pune, and I am a resident of Mumbai. Uh, so both of us they started this company, NutriFresh, and we initially went for a smaller projects like growing a sugar cane. then doing orchid farming then doing open field organic farming and as we progressed we understand that we require something which should be round the year which should be pesticide free and residue free okay and that is how we came across a concept known as hydroponics uh, we Hydro started hydroponics. developing so we are these hydroponics. hydroponics so how how yes. what, what is so hydroponics hydroponic is yeah hydroponics is a simple concept uh, it is so vegetables are grown without soil okay that is a basic concept it is it uses uh, nutrient rich water or it uses uh, the medias like coco peat or rock wool to grow your vegetables and fruits just as the blood flows in the body the water flows in this system called as nutrient film technique let me show you how the water flows these are the pipelines through which the water flows and the plant takes the adequate water nutrients from this film Generally, in a hydroponic farming, the automation and the nutrition unit is considered to be the heart of any system. The entire system is IoT based; it's completely automated. There is no human intervention required, and the entire nutrition of the ten acres of the plot is done from a single place. The What is the main advantage of uh, the hydroponic uh, farming as compared to normal regular farming? Uh, there are three basic advantages. Uh, the first and foremost is the producers are available round the year. irrespective okay. of the climate irrespective of the challenges in the natural environment these are grown round the year mm -hmm. so if i want lettuce i can get lettuce round the year i want bell peppers i can get bell peppers round the year if i want a uh, basil or a mint or a fenugreek i can get round the year this is the first and foremost advantage of hydroponics and uh, is the, there a limit in the height to which the plants can grow obviously not all plants can be grown no you can't grow an apple plant or uh, a chiku plant there yeah correct we cannot grow the trees or we cannot grow fruits we can basically grow all the fruity or the leafy vegetables consistent growth that we are seeing in this market for the first year cagr is approximately 20 to 22% in this kind of industry and our is coming to around 25% which is very good yes uh, the incident the thing which is the lockdown has been a very helpful thing for us Mm -hmm. uh, due to the lockdown people are not able to come out of their houses and that is the point where we deliver fresh vegetables which is harvested within 24 hours to their plates 
Okay. This is also almost a self-employment venture, like Atmanir Bhar, what Modi says. So how many people do you have you employed now? Uh, currently, uh, in NutriFresh, we have employed 80 plus people and out of which 65 are females. And okay. on top of that, our uh, distribution, what we have done is we have uh, tied up with Tigris Moms, which are which is a women incubator uh, company. <laughs> They okay. employ or they give uh, entrepreneurship development to women. Basically, only housewives, those who want to enter into the small kind of a scale business. So mm -hmm. we make them as channel partners. They help us grow our business in their societies, in their locality. And they get the good commission on that and they get the income while sitting at home only. Okay, so the Tigers moms have their own members across and they... Yes. Uh, okay. Currently, we are just, sir, I would say 0.001% uh, of the population of Mumbai is Pune in Mumbai and Mumbai and Pune is served by NutriFresh. Yes. There is a vast scope. 10 acres is not sufficient. We may have to go up to 200 acres to set our aim large and become a 30% market share in Mumbai and Pune market. Okay. So we are now looking out for private equity investment because even they require some kind of proof of concept that whether these people are eligible True. or they are, they are they are good enough to do, take up this business or not. And that and is they also look at their ROI. They also look at their ROI. ROI. Yes, yes, yes. So this is kind of a proof of concept for these people or investors to come in and see that actually how the business is growing and how they are performing the business. Great. We'll try it out. Let I'll go to your app and we'll try it out for my home also. So nice talking definitely, to you, Sanket. Definitely you should. Nice talking to you, yes. Sanket. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, thank you so much. We'll, we'll keep keep it safe, keep in touch. Hello, viewers. Welcome to another show on the Connect TV. As usual, we are bringing out a very interesting aspect uh, of our society. Uh, probably for the first time, a robot will be addressing the finance minister. The robot uh, called Alton developed by Inker of Trishur explains as to what the artificial in the intelligence industry and the robotic industry expects from the budget. So over to Alton, the robot. Hello Rahul. Oh, look who's here. Hello Alton. Hello Wemo. Hey, welcome dear Alton. So here we were just sharing our thoughts on the upcoming budget presentation by our finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. Meanwhile, Alton is one of the humanoid robots we developed here inside Inca Robotics. Alton, do you have anything to say? Yes, I do have. Thank you for asking. Dear Nirmala Sitharaman, these good people who build me at Inca Robotics have hopes in the union budget of 2021. Globally, we are a part of $168 billion automation industry. For our country, we recommend you to create a unified support system that helps businesses in every industry to upgrade their operational processes in line with Industry 4.0. Robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning and other emerging technologies will help India to grow faster. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Inker's uh, CEO uh, briefly talking about uh, the industry's expectations. 11.5 percentage. Indian economy is expected to grow at 11.5 percentage in 2021. We are going to be the only major economy in the world to register a double digit growth in this year. This is from the GDP growth projection report by IMF. As we all know, on the 1st of February, our finance minister is going to present the union budget 2020-21. Corporates in different sectors like healthcare, retail, real estate, automobiles, they've already shared their expectation on what they want from the budget. All the industries we will just mention and also not mentioned will go through an inevitable process, automation. Automation and these futuristic technologies have a vital role to play in the growth of all these industries. From manufacturing to customer service, to logistics, to everything, we are going to see and experience the change. Being an entrepreneur in the field of robotic and automation, I request Nirmala Sidharaman, our Honorable Finance Minister, to consider rolling out great measures to support robotics and automation industry. 
Let us all hope that robotics and automation industry will also be energized after the union budget announcement. Let us deploy humanoid robots, industrial arms and drones to make our lives easier. So let us be future, be future ready. ready. पहला गेम खेल के तो देखो एंड सी देयर इज बीन अ जनरल क्रिटिसिज्म यू नो दैट द गेमिंग यू नो इट 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 मेक्स पीपल लेजी इट टेक्स अवे लॉट ऑफ टाइम फ्रॉम द यूथ सम पीपल इवन कंसीडर इट एज अ वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम व्हाट यू टेक ऑन दैट सी आई वुड से नॉट कंप्लीटली एग्री टू दैट because uh, you agree half in, in our childhood we have always you agree half <laughs> so it it discussion one that is one thing and i can understand is that uh, auto folding can be manipulated auto folding see anything can be manipulated in terms of when you talk about hackers point of view yeah so it's not that we have no, seen i'm not talking gamers point of view i'm talking hackers point of view only i'm talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. Hello viewers welcome to another show on the connect tv today we have a uh, mr krishnan duguha a young uh, he is uh, to online gaming in fact he's got a company called adda 52 uh, adda is very interesting because in mumbai a lot of people are familiar with the word adda because that's a place you know people uh, it's a kind of a hangout but colloquially it's called adda adda 52 uh, i don't know why is he call his course is 52 then to online gaming and uh, poker in particular what about the online gaming scenario, scenario in the country and the legal situation and the what the companies is all about how the business going and what is the business like for online gaming because in the in these days of work from, work from home and work from anywhere i believe any activity connected with online is uh, picking up so welcome uh, krishnendu uh, i'll call you krish if you don't mind so thank you thank you Yeah, you can yeah absolutely me, yeah you can call me bnk if you like no no issues so welcome krish uh, so yeah, welcome sure. to the show uh, let's start understanding the thank you general online gaming scenario in the country uh, briefly krish yeah so um, I, uh, this company adda 52 uh, was formed in 2011 and at that time that point of time there wasn't any uh, uh, like like if you talk about the online gaming market it was very niche like it was very new and uh, naive at that point of time and uh, slowly over the years it has picked up a lot with lot of different type of uh, online gaming opportunities coming in uh, especially indian startups as well as from outside lot of uh, companies like chinese companies also started investing so that uh, it grew up slowly uh, uh, in this uh, fear like gaming in terms of whenever like when we were young the gaming concept was totally different yeah uh, where we used to play on nintendos and uh, like mario and stuff like that but then uh, slowly it evolved and it has taken from a tv screen to a purely uh, handheld device and uh, if if we talk about like there were different types of gamings like gaming where uh you play uh, like for free there were gaming which used to uh, involve money so uh, like the real money gaming scenario probably it started uh, booming in like uh, you can say booming in from 2018 onwards 2016 uh, 17 onwards but 2011 when we started adavitu.com uh, and the 52 as you mentioned uh, as you had queried So fifty-two is the number of cards uh, in a card okay. deck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 because uh, in, in, or in our childhood we have always you agree half <laughs> so it 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 depends like uh, it actually depends so if it's like anything which gets into addiction mode it is that 
Yeah. But uh, anything which is done for recreational, it is good. So let's say I can be a movie buff and I can watch movies, let's say for 12 hours in a day. Yeah. So that's addiction, which is bad. I think uh, till 2019, uh, every every company was seeing, I and mean, including us, we were seeing uh, like a uh, normal progressive growth. Uh, sometimes it was static, sometimes it grew a little bit. But I think this lockdown where uh, people were forced to stay at home and the situation, this helped people to uh, focus more on recreational activities. Now all the movie halls and everything, like everything was closed. You are stuck yeah. to your home. And that actually created a, a huge surge for the need of this gaming in, uh, environment. So before you ask, I'm going to meet my friends. Look, I know lockdown and all chal raha but a girl needs a break. She needs excitement in her life. She needs a night of glitz and glam with her fam and favorite adda. Adda 52, where you can play with real people or you can play with your friends and earn real cash. So what are you waiting for? Join now at Adda 52. Cause honey, poker party bhi zaruri hai. One second, did you really think I was going out? Stay home, stay safe, and join the poker party at Adda 52. And people were uh, flooding into uh, all those gaming platforms. And you talk about any gaming platform, whether it's a free gaming or it's a paid gaming. But if I talk about uh, where money is involved in a paid gaming, uh, that uh, channel, uh, that source actually really surged. And we have also seen, like, uh, if I talk about in numbers, like we have seen uh, during the lock time, uh, lockdown time, almost 12% uh, growth of daily active users playing uh, on our site. So that increased a lot. And can uh, we, can we still... talk about some, some numbers? How many people on average play or how does it increase? How does it vary uh, day to day? Is it more on the weekends? How does it happen? So uh, usually the uh, surge is, happens uh, around like Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the like a prime day for your gaming activities where all the, uh, if, if, if we talk about from a marketing aspect, aspect also, we see a lot of surge in uh, weekends, during the weekends. And we also uh, uh, focus like, like, like all other major companies uh, who are into this sphere, they all focus on uh, big events, specifically on uh, the weekends, like Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, during the weekdays also, usually what happens, like if I talk about the timings of gameplays, usually uh, the surge happens after seven in, uh, in the evening. So usually uh, during the afternoon, probably when you have the lunch time between, let's say two to like 12 to 2.30, that's where one surge happens and the remaining surge happens around seven o'clock. And it carries like till 11, 12. And uh, typically what is what kind of uh, age uh, group, age brackets uh, they come to gaming? See, poker being a very niche category and uh, here uh, it's, it's primarily the youth population which comes in. So we have around, uh, the major segment of users that come around is like 21, 22 till 40. <laughs> And to do uh, in the afternoons to do a lot of women also come into play or that's uh... so we have uh, uh, women also playing uh, poker and uh, obviously as compared to uh, like a male female ratio the female ratio is still uh, less but uh, if you look at uh, the trend yes uh, there has been an increasing trend uh, in poker uh, when it comes to women like if, if, I, if I say, for example, if I compare five years back, probably there would be one or two percent and probably the, uh, and if I compare now, it would have gone up to eight to ten percent. So it's a mind game and it requires a lot of patience. See, there's no uh, uh, shortcut to success. And yeah. here also it applies uh, uh, as well. 
and uh, you have to give that game a lot of time because uh, there is a lot of uh, probability like uh, and and statistical uh, importance in how uh, you need to play there are different uh, like poker strategies which you need to apply based yeah. on the statistical relevance so all these things you have to understand and then only you can play so it's, it it requires a lot of uh, mind as well jnpt india's number one container port occupies a place of pride in india's infrastructure we are trying to do is bring in live uh, streaming uh, shopping videos on to our platform so we are a mix of uh, entertainment some shopping <laughs> very anywhere between 16 to 50 40 45 mostly and uh, they are more, they are the kind of people who uh, enjoy content so initially they come on the app to enjoy the content see dance videos and this and that Hello viewers uh, welcome to another show of the connect series uh, today we have a very interesting uh, guest from uh, akiko tv you may be wondering as to what is this akiko tv is all about uh, if you recall uh, after uh, the government of india told tiktok to take a walk and of course along with other 117 uh, chinese apps uh, people felt that there could be a gap there will be a void that be that could be difficult to fill because tiktok has been uh, extremely popular not only in uh, the uh, uh, big cities but also in the small cities a lot of people have been making a money in their been serving uh, you know using the tiktok app and uploading their videos etc there have been tiktok stars and things like that so to fill that gap a uh, lot of entrepreneurs have jumped in uh, today we have the story of uh, kiko tv Kiko TV uh, basically aims to try and fill the gap. Uh, they have uh, uh, multiple uh, objectives, uh, in aspects rather, uh, not only uploading uh, videos, uh, jokes, uh, fun, comedy, uh, dance, drama, music, etc. But they also have a built-in uh, shopping app, so it's a uh, Uh, the shop video streaming that uh, you know for shopping so you can do shopping using the video streaming uh, facility like you do uh, tele shopping but here here do it on the mobile but of course with the 
much larger uh, interface and uh, interaction. So to know all details about the Kiko TV and uh, how the business has been growing and what are the prospects, uh, we have uh, uh, two, two uh, spokespersons from the Kiko TV, Alok Chawala and uh, Nita Chawala. So welcome to the show, Alok and Nita. Uh, take over, the floor is yours. You love plants? I love plants. Taking care of plants is not that difficult. And I'm going to help you fall in love with plants all over again. Who calls himself a lazy gardener and we believe of late he's graduated himself from being lazy gardener to a broad gardener. Uh, today we have an absolutely interesting uh, topic to discuss. Uh, maths. Mathematic skill is one of the crucial skill uh, where the children have to develop when they are very young. And uh, we are the first in India to conduct this arithmetic contest as such because... That has given me that even I think I should become one of the kids today to take part in this variety. Now, what uh, uh, property insurance, general insurance, is it on the rise for the property etc? Sir, so definitely it's on the rise. Earlier, basically, package products and home insurance or business insurance were not there. Okay. Now, most of the company are coming out with the package policy for home insurance. And uh, organizations like uh, Probus, we have recently in the month of June, uh, launched property insurance on a portal. Anyone who is interested in property insurance can get it property insurance on the, uh, our, through our portal in a minute's time. It will not take much of the time and cost is very, very less. For suppose you are going to insure your property for 75 lakhs rupees. Yeah. Total premium comes around 10,000 rupees in city like Bombay, which is very, very municipal. Okay. This, is, this was also due to the lack of penetration, lack of the basic uh, expertise from the insurance company. That's why they were not promoting such product because ticket size was very, very less and required lots of to and fro. But now since products are simpler, innovative, and those can be sold through online channels. So now definitely it's on rise. And if you see in last one year, so many cyclone and other calamities have struck in India. So people are seriously interested in buying all such kind of products. So basically what I've seen in the last nine years, people who used to sell the LIC, they are not really very open to sell any other products. Yeah. They are fiercely loyal to the LIC. And since they were not interested in LIC, uh, they were not interested other than LIC. Yeah. So in the different kind of distribution had created in India in the last 15, 18 years. So nowadays, so many agents are there who don't have a prior experience selling LIC product. They are coming into this field. The talent is phenomenal what we have seen. I think um, we have one of the amazing creative lot in our team. Hello viewers, welcome to another show of the Connect series. Today we have Mr. Rahul Tekwani, a young energetic communication professional who has uh, close to a decade of experience in uh, public relations, brand management, image building, etc. 
and uh, the good news is that uh, rahul at the age of just 26 he is uh, decided to be on his own he is setting up uh, his own company called excellent branding edge strategic communication so i think the age is with him and let's hope that he will also enjoy the edge in communication to start the chat with rahul rahul congrats on your uh, great leap uh, super thank you so much uh, thank you uh, so you just launched your uh, new venture uh, tell us something about yeah. it how many centers you have you started basically in mumbai and uh, what is it been yeah um, so as i told you the name of the company is branding edge strategic communication it's the company is focused on strategic design strategy from for the brand side as well as for the reputation side uh, when we talk about the brand side we create strategy for creative like uh, typical advertising side of the business digital side of the business design side of the business and how your events and influencer management takes place uh, in the in the reputation side we design strategy the media strategies we work on crisis communication program capital market strategies and especially the social communication so that's uh, where the major aim of company is focused as of now. As of now, the company has two centers. The company operate the head office is out of Mumbai. And then in the north, we have an office in Delhi. A variety of uh, you know communication aspects that we be offering to your clients. So yeah. you have the talent for all this because uh, it's difficult to get talent these days. How are, how are you managing that for a new company like yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the talent the talent is phenomenal. What we have seen, I think um, we have one of the amazing creative lot in our team. You know, the creative lords who are willing to think outside the box and who are willing to go that extra step to transform the the strategy that we make for our client, you know, who are actually the lot who thinks more about driving strategy and data management rather than execution. Hello viewers, uh, welcome to yet another special uh, under the Janhitmi series. Uh, today we have uh, another major uh, issue related to the environment uh, that we want to discuss. Uh, you will all recall that the Chief Minister during his recent uh, address during the International Day of Biodiversity event has uh, uh, very clearly pointed out that there should be a Lakshman Rekha between uh, development and conservation of uh, environment. Uh, he said that this Lakshman Rekha should be very, very strictly observed. Exactly, sir. It is uh, this Lakshman Rekha that is being violated repeatedly in uh, MMR, particularly in Uran area. Uh, the latest in the series of dissections uh, comes from uh, uh, Sheva, the earth soil Sheva village in Uran, where uh, there is a massive uh, barrier of mangroves and wetland is going on. In fact, it is not JNPT, it is Sirkwa is also violating this. So, some of the areas, mangrove areas, which are yet to be given to us, is primarily the area which is in possession of Sirkwa and JNPT. These are the major chunk. Also, some little bit area under MADA and MMRDA. They are the other agencies uh, who are also, also holding some mangrove areas. But primarily, Sidco and JNPT, we had been uh, pursuing with them. 
and honorable high court has already passed a very specific order that uh, sidco should be uh, sh handing over the area and they had given uh, the timeline of 3 months uh, which is i think almost uh, it is uh, more than 3 years have gone now but uh, 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 it is yet to be so i uh, regarding jnpt also we are in touch with them Uh, at one instant they said ki no we were not aware of the high court order so we uh, we had returned to them again to hand over the area uh, however through newspaper we came to know ki they they have they are asking forest department to tell us which areas to be handed over however they have not written back to us and we don't have the land details of the jnpt so see we do not know on, on satellite map we know sir, some areas which are mangrove but we don't know who are in possession of those areas so as uh, already uh, mr kumar said uh, that it is on their website they have written that they have about 900 hectare of mangrove so we expect and today uh, i am going to issue a reminder also to them uh, to hand over the area instead of uh, handing over this starting the process of handing over these mangroves to the forest department jnpt has started destroying them again अगेन इन खारगर वी हैव कम अक्रॉस डंपिंग ऑफ डिब्री ऑन मैंग्रोव विच इज बीन ऑल्सो है खारगर में काफी सेक्टर्स में ट्रक आके ये डबरीज डम्प करके जा रहे हैं ये अभी बहुत कॉमन हो गया है सेक्टर 16, सेक्टर 18 सेक्टर 25, 28 एंड 35. आए दिन यहाँ पे ट्रक आके यूज ट्रक आके यहाँ पे डंप करके जा रहे हैं डबरीज हमने काफ़ी अथॉरिटीज़ को कंप्लेन किया है विद नंबर विद देयर व्हीकल डिटेल्स लेकिन कुछ भी एक्शन अभी तक नहीं लिया गया है मेजर थ्रेट टू द इको सिस्टम ऑफ खारगर इज डेबरी डम्पिंग सो खारगर इज एक्टिवली डेवलपिंग नोड ऑफ नवी मुंबई and lot of construction is going on and the debris is dumped across the various spaces open spaces in khargar dumping has been always there or always been there in khargar not now since many years we have been noticing the dumping and each and every corner of khargar uh, whether it was its hillside or some lane or some uh, open space some park corners Uh, mangroves uh, wetlands uh, swampy areas open spaces the dumpings are always been done the we have of course as nat connect we have drawn the attention of uh, ms anna sahab misal the chairman of the mangrove committee the high court appointed mangrove conservation and protection committee and he said he will uh, definitely look into that hopefully something will happen Sir, welcome to the show. Uh, let's understand. Uh, give us a, a walk through about your, your, on your project, that is the project. Sure, sure. Thanks, uh, uh, Kumar Sir, giving this platform so that we can explain ourselves. And we are really honored to be over here and uh, present ourselves as uh, we deal with uh, one of the growing crises in India. And uh, thank you very much. So, uh, to begin with, I have a master's degree in biomedical engineering. Uh, from University of Texas in US, okay. and post that I worked for corporations like GE Healthcare, Philips, and uh, my career in uh, medical devices spanning more than ten uh, to twelve years. In my last job uh, between two thousand thirteen and two thousand eighteen, I was uh, based in Delhi, and I was. and i was handling the asia pacific region for kidney care products for a very good company called baxter and uh, so i uh, collaborated with a lot of nephrologists my teams and just to understand the landscape of kidney care in india and lot of shocking uh, numbers facts and figures came to my uh, attention and came to my knowledge a um, lot of uh, a huge percentage estimated around 11 to 15 lakh uh, kidney patients are there in india okay. and uh, out of which uh, which uh, 
probably half of them are able to get dialysis. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of data that says that only 25 to 30 percent get kidney care, and these are the identified patients. The, okay. the ones which are not identified, there is really no systematic study that is done in India. So it's a huge problem, a huge crisis that is growing day by day because uh, because of diabetes and hypertension. A lot of kidney failures are coming day by day. And uh, the we will never know about it. Correct. I think India, by by and large, I think uh, culturally we have this issue of uh, not attending to the medical issues unless it comes to your neck. Correct. Whether it is uh, Correct. Corona, whether it is any of the diseases, you know. And right. uh, though we have been independent for the past uh, say 70, 70 plus years now, um, we are still lagging in terms of. Uh, though of course there are. Uh, a uh, lot of uh, progress uh, has been there is a lot of lot of progress that has been made but uh, okay. i think uh, the, the problems like kidney still remain largely unattended correct correct and uh, also uh, one uh, one uh, fact is that you know uh, for example bollywood um, if there, it's very popular that and we've seen across 70s and 2000s that you know the the hero or hero's mom has cancer yeah or uh, you know blood cancer or yes. brain tumor so these are the very much in the forefront and people know about it but kidney care is something that has it's not have been in popular uh, you know out there now dialysis is a lifeline for kidney uh, patients Yes. Uh, the blood does not get purified. Uh, the the urea and the creatinine in the fluid accumulates in the body, and instead of seven liters of uh, blood, which the heart is made to pump, now yeah. the, uh, the entire system is pumping nine to ten liters of fluid. So uh, immediately it is a death sentence, yes. and, and it is a procedure called dialysis, which actually filters and takes out the fluid and the urea and the toxins and the creatinine out of the body, and essentially gives the kidney patient. Few more days of life, but is and it a lifelong? Is, uh, is it lifelong treatment? Dialysis one has yeah. to be on it lifelong. Right, right. So once uh, once it is a chronic kidney disease, it is called CKD, and it has got one to five stages. So once it's uh, you are uh, 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 the patient is in a CKD, chronic kidney disease, it is uh, pretty much that uh, there will be uh, uh, there will be a therapy that is required lifelong. Okay. Um, because the kidneys are not functioning, and uh, it is called a renal replacement therapy. So yeah. it uh, the kidneys, the function of the kidneys, since the kidneys are not functioning, has to be done externally with a yeah. procedure called dialysis. The only other option is a kidney transplant, which happens only in three to five percent of the total cases, even in developed countries. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, it also has complications, and also it is unaffordable to the mm -hmm. masses. Yes. So dialysis literally is the lifeline for kidney patients and for 15 lakh to 18 lakh patients out there in India, uh, dialysis is a huge, huge requirement and a repetitive requirement. Every two days, every three days, every three days, uh, the patient has to go take a four hour dialysis therapy so that he can survive some more. After three days, again, he has to come, which takes a toll on his uh, socio-economic uh, structure. He yeah. cannot do a job some uh, most of the times. Uh, also, he has to be accompanied by someone else yes. uh, in the family. And that's lots of lot of stress, the travel, the time, and also the employment gets affected. So it's a double whammy. And, and what, are the, is, what, are, what are, going by your experience, what could have been the major reasons? One is, of course, the diabetes. And... Uh, Statistics show that diabetes is on the rise because of the lifestyle right. and uh, the kind of uh, right. food people eat, right. etc. So, correct, any, correct. Uh, other than diabe di uh, diabetes, what could be the other reasons you know which are responsible for right, kidney, right. kidney issues? Right. So, diabetes. So, uh -huh. even in developing countries and uh, 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 some of the developed countries across, uh, thirty percent to sixty percent of the cases are through because of diabetes and high blood pressure. And it is not just diabetes and high blood pressure, but also the medication towards it, uh, okay. which uh, puts a pressure on uh, the kidneys. So that is one reason. The other is autoimmune, which is yet being studied. Uh, third is uh, hereditary. Uh, there's a lot of research is being done uh, and certain family structures and, you know, certain families are, uh, are seen, they are prone to 
having kidney failures if someone's uh, uncle or grandmother had suffered they are at a higher risk also the food and the water habits mm -hmm. sometimes the water quality and the well water and the brackish water also does lot of uh, damage to the system including mm -hmm. the kidney and certain coastal region with high salinity have shown that yeah there is a, a significant correlation um, in chances of kidney failure in such regions so when i saw that there is a rampant uh, growth and every year almost 2 and 1/2 lakh people die because of not being able to get adequate dialysis is uh, when i met with nephrologists and a uh, lot of experts i myself traveled to the interiors of maharashtra and the outskirts of mumbai and i got to know that the current scenario is that uh, uh, most of the dialysis centers are 15 to 20 bed dialysis centers and they are located within tier 1 cities okay and because there was a very very peculiar uh, condition that uh, the the people from the outskirts of tier 1 cities and the tier 2 cities were having to travel sometimes 150 kilometers 200 kilometers every 3 days to get their dialysis and come into the city this is the scenario which did not even make uh, a social sense medical sense or even business sense yes. so it is an untapped uh, 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 territory that there are patients on the outskirts and the peripheries and the neighborhoods of tier 1 2 and 3 cities who do not get proximate access to kidney care dialysis every 2 days 3 days and they are having to travel such a long distance are but aren't there any mobile units which can cater to this kind of requirement see so mobile units are not economical mobile units imagine having a, a van a driver a physician a dialysis technician a machine and a water you know a water tank each dialysis takes around 150 liters of pure water okay. uh, the petrol uh, the biomedical waste management there are so many parameters that go into it and the van goes and travels to somewhere and maybe does two or three or four dialysis in a day okay. that is not the volume it can and, cater and the hygiene so, issues hygiene issues also yeah. Uh, right and hygiene issues and also economy it, it's just very uh, difficult uh, uh, to make the ends meet as against if you actually open a dialysis center over there with even two or three bed then you are serving at least 9 to 10 dialysis sessions in a day which means that you are able to serve 30 35 patients who otherwise would be traveling 100 kilometers far to get their dialysis so, so when that, this uh, and almost all almost all the uh, small places around the main city peripheries uh, they will be having they have must be having this kind of uh, issues i mean let's take mumbai of course is very large and mumbai right. out of Mum outside mumbai right. is also totally urbanized so take this like a uh, place like satara or say a surat or a baroda yeah, correct those kind of places in the peripheries uh, you you need to say there will be lot of patients like this will be requiring Safe. absolutely absolutely even even within mumbai within mumbai there are uh, there are these stations and suburbs and between the suburbs if you uh, uh, if you go uh, yeah. there are uh, the patients have to travel even in, uh, you know because they, bombay the travel time is more it's all uh, yeah. distance yeah. maybe yeah. might be 4 kilometers but it takes 45 minutes to go True. so if you have a dialysis uh, center 45 minutes away that doesn't work you need a dialysis center which is very close to home it is like just a neighborhood like a like a kirana that is the ideal state and oh. then people will be served better that is because the dialysis that, that is the requirement. requirement right exactly because the dialysis patients have a little fistula uh, on their hand they are weak they are stressed they are depressed and you can't tell them to uh, go uh, 10 kilometers let's say 10 just 10 kilometers forget about 100 kilometers which is really the scenario in india today but even 10 kilometers how can you expect this person who most probably is above 65 to travel 10 kilometers every two days every two days just for dialysis and to survive people give up on the treatment people get infection and there are so many mortalities just because of proximation you know the proximate availability of dialysis so the number one thing i found out yeah when my research leaving the corp you know from my corporate job that i was uh, doing was that uh, proximity of the dialysis center availability is very very essential to get quality care and to make sure that th there is a sustained uh, treatment that the patient avails um, i gave up on my job and i thought this is really something worth doing 
So I started with one dialysis uh, center uh, in the northern suburb of Mumbai and uh, it, it kicked off very well. It was an instant success Where because uh, we was, collaborate with horribly. A uh, lot of 90% of the healthcare happens in those neighborhood 35, 40, 50 bed neighborhood hospitals and nursing homes. Yes. That's where people are like, okay, I know the doctor over there. They go and get it, get admitted. Yes. We collaborate with these 35, 50 uh, bed yes. hospitals who are in the outskirts and the peripheries and even the suburbs. And uh, they are very happy. They, uh, the hospital knows that, uh, you know, there is a revenue sharing. Uh, they have a space of 200 square feet and we do not, our model is not that we uh, we want to open a 15 to 20 bed big dialysis center. Even if there is a space for two beds, we will install those two beds, start tra uh, treating the patients and all the patient population around will now not have to go 100 kilometers and they get a treatment pro approximate in their neighborhood hospital. So today uh, so we uh, starting with one center in one and a half years, we have 21 centers in Mumbai, Pune, Thane, Nasik region and the hospitals are very, very willing to collaborate and uh, we do not have a business development or a sales team either. It's just organic. Uh, people by word of mouth, they feel that, okay, we can also open a dialysis uh, offering at our hospital. So today the renal project is a dialysis management expert. You can just, you, we are just one phone call away. And now because of us, even a orth orthopedic doctor, who's a mm -hmm. bone doctor, right? Yeah, An yeah. orthopedic doctor with his 35 bed nursing home is now enabled to have dialysis as one of the offering and he can serve the kidney uh, growing kidney care population around him.